All right, what's up, everyone? Um, obviously, you know, this is James. Um, Harry and I have been talking now for a couple weeks about more ways that we could give back to the community. Um, and something that we've really wanted to do for a while now is to restart the MIC After Hours podcast. Uh, we both kind of really like each other's tabs a lot of the times, um, you know, but I think we talk to each other about more the emotional side of trading rather than actual like the technical and fundamental side of it and actually what we're doing. So that's something we kind of wanted to bring into the podcast. Uh, everyone knows all the big traders out there. We know Alex and Bao and you know, Tosh, and we know all the moderators as well, but you know, we know their journeys, but we wanted to kind of dig deeper into the emotional side of their trading journey from start to where they are now. Um, and we think that's a little bit more personal, like more personal into each other's lives. And we want to get to know everyone a little bit better as well. Um, I know Harry's really been wanting to do this for a long time. So Harry, you can, you can take it. Yeah. So I guess we are just kind of do like more of a more emotional timeline of your, your journey. And I guess probably the best way to start off would be like, uh, you know, how are you feeling after you sold the REMS off your car and did it positively or negatively affect your trading? Like, what was that like uh, for your mindset and uh, how did that affect your kind of mentality going forward? That's a good question, man. So number one, before I answer that question, I want to like, I want to like make this podcast like fun too. You know what I'm saying? Like we don't always have to talk about trading. We don't always have to talk about the stock market. Yeah. Me and James, like we had like a house party a couple months ago. So like, I'm probably going to bring up some stories about that. But uh, to answer your question, man, to be, to be just like a hundred percent honest, man, that was my last shot, right? Like it was either make it or break it there. Right. I needed something concrete to tell me that shit. If I was not able to do this right now, I was probably never able to do it. And Bao has a similar story that he took a mortgage out on his house uh, to fund one of his trading accounts. He took a bet that big on himself. So that was kind of my way of taking a bet on myself because, dude, to make two grand, I would have to work fucking, what is that, four, eight. I would have to work like four or four five years. months at Starbucks. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. I could either work four or five months or I could sell the rims on my car. And if I fail, I would have to go to back to work for four or five months to make that back and go back to do what I was doing, you know? So, so did you feel like after that last two grand, were you going to try trading again if you blew up? Or did you kind of in the back of your head feel like, shit, this is it. This is the last chance for me. If I can't do it now, I don't know if I'm going to try this again. Uh, honestly, bro, that's what I said to myself back then. I said, this is it. If I don't get it, I'm never going to do it again. But if I had failed there... I would have found another way to make some money to get back to it. I think, yeah. to be honest, I would have just fucking found it. I would have sold my Xbox, dude. I would have fucking yeah. sold my fucking shoes. I would have sold it. <laughs> I had fucking nothing left. You know what I'm saying? Just because yeah. I believed in myself that much. And I already was kind of, I was passionate, man. Like I would be excited to watch videos. I would be excited to like go on YouTube and research. I was excited yeah. to do this shit. And people always told me that like you would, you never be successful unless you did what you love. And I was like, fuck, I hate fucking everything, bro. Like everything fucking sucks. I'm not good at anything. I'm not <laughs> athletic. I'm not that fucking good looking. Like I suck at everything. Right. So yeah. I said to myself, here I am. I found something that I like, I don't love it yet, but I like it. So I might as well try to take advantage of that at least, you know? So that makes sense. So at this point you were what, 19 years old? uh 19 man 19 i think 19. 18 or 19 i think i'm fucking so, 25 26 now shit yeah. so you so you come from like a pretty hard working family like we know the story of like your father and i was actually just listening to the old after hours podcast today and we know how hard working of a guy he is and how sure. hard working you are but did they see day trading like the same way you do like did they see that there was like some sort of light at the end of the tunnel that actually could be like, no, like could be it was a the job? opposite it was the opposite because my dad lost a metric fuck ton of money in 2008, like a shitload of money. He had yeah. a bunch of investments in the stock yeah. market and he was the guy that fucking panicked out at the bottom, obviously, because he has no fucking clue yeah. what he's doing. So he has no since, investment. Like, like no, he's, he's investment fucking yet. buying like, like serious XM sand yeah. disc. <laughs> I think he told me he had like Netflix at like 80 bucks or some shit. And he sold it at like 76 or I don't know. I don't really know, but he's, clueless 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 has no fucking clue about the stock market doesn't even know anything 
If anything, bro, yeah. if he tries to put his money into the stock market, he like loses every time. It's like, if you do the opposite of what my dad does, you'll fucking make money. It's like CNBC. <laughs> but my parents hated it, dude. They said I was an idiot. They said I was a gambler. They said I would lose all my money. They said I shouldn't be wasting my time with it. Uh, in college, in college, I was making a couple hundred bucks a week trading. I would pay off the kids in my class to help me with my tests and my homework. And I would go to my parents and I'd be like, look, I'm making $2,000 a week trading, right? I'm making two grand a week yeah. trading. I want to drop out of school. School's taking too much of my time. Like I'm done with it. And they're like, no, you're eventually going to lose all of your money. Stay in school. Meanwhile, my brother, Alan dropped out of school two years late. Like he dropped out of school as a sophomore. So like <laughs> after they realized that like school really wasn't the secret, yeah. then they started being more comfortable. And after a certain point, when I started making, I think the turning point was when I made $60,000 on CLTX and mm -hmm. that trade afforded me to be able to go to the trading conference in Las Vegas with my dad. And that conference is where my dad and Bao met for the first time ever. Oh shit. Bao was, so cool. yeah. Bao was presenting and I was just in the audience. I was just fucking watching just me and my dad. And my dad's like, this guy's fucking smart. This guy knows <laughs> what he's doing. I, I like this guy, right? So yeah. ever since he saw Bao presenting and seeing that he was a normal guy and not like a Wall Street snobby asshole, then he's like car salesman. Yeah, yeah, then you realize that maybe there's potential here, right? Maybe there's yeah. potential. This is before me and Bauer ever friends. He was yeah, just that's a funny. baller ass dude that made $1.4 million on Fannie Mae, you know? That's yeah. funny as hell. Now, it's funny that you, your dad kind of sensed that about Bao too, because I think everyone gets that same emotion when they're talking to Bao. Like, we know he's a, an animal. He drinks a lot. He's a savage. But, like, <laughs> yeah, he's a exactly. genius. But he's a genius. He's like a savant yeah. when it comes to this. He's but humble, it, man. My, my dad is the type of person that he grew up in a village where his entire house was the size of my office. He had uh, three brothers and four sisters. His dad was a poor blacksmith, right? A blacksmith, literally fucking, yeah. like, you know, that shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, my dad was a Christian. So when he lived in uh, the Middle East, if you were not Muslim, they threw like rocks at you. You know what I'm saying? So like, Jesus, yeah. my dad's dad, who was a blacksmith, built them fucking metal rods to beat the shit out of anyone that threw rocks at them. So he came from very humble beginnings. So he thought that most of these wall street guys were assholes. They were scumbags. They yeah. were fucking no. bags. But going to that conference in Vegas is what made trading and stock market seem at least not yeah. a scam at that point. And, like, and at this point in your career, you were like, Pretty, I mean, obviously very consistent, I'm assuming, right? This was early in my career. I would say maybe year two of my journey when I was just really starting to get really the hang of it. Like that CLTX trade, CETF, can't remember the fucking ticker. That trade yeah, yeah. was the trade that I didn't even realize what the hell happened. I just yeah. traded and then I looked and I was like, what the fuck did I just do? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I didn't even know in the moment what the hell was happening, you know? And I'm, so you, I'm guessing you told like your family, like what you did and like how much you made. So how did they kind of like, how did things change from there on out? Like, were they now more into the idea? Same with friends There were people kind of like, Oh shit. Like now this dude is like, this dude's a baller. Like he's now well, making a story. Uh, after that trade or after I went to Vegas, uh, they still thought that I was going to lose all that money, right? They still thought that Jeez. I was going to lose all that money because it was beginner's luck, they thought, right? Because yeah. my parents, again, bro, remember, they come from a family, a background where education is the only way to escape poverty. You have to become like a doctor. Yeah. You got to become a fucking lawyer. If you don't go to school, you're going to be broke forever. And here I am gambling, making all this money. It's like they're embarrassed by it. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it's not traditional, right? It's not traditional. So the point that got me to, um, for my parents to really believe in me or to really start thinking that this was real was after my first six figure day. Uh, after that, that is when they start to say, okay, maybe there's something here. Yeah. Oh shit. That's pretty cool. Harry, your parents are the same way, right? Your parents were yeah. kind of 
kind of like, not against it, but they weren't really necessarily believing in what you were yeah. doing. So like, and... I, yeah, I started like super young. Like, I mean, I was in like, basically I got like a really bad concussion in like grade 10, grade 11. Makes and sense. I, I was like, uh, so I'm at my grandparents right now because like my house right now is just too hectic downstairs in my dad's office. My dad's just on a bunch of conference calls at the moment. So I just came here and brought my laptop and yeah, I, it was like, you know, uh, grade, like, gr I guess like the summer grade 10, grade 11, I just saw these like gurus on YouTube, like, oh yeah, you can make a million dollars doing this, make a million dollars doing that. And I guess I have a different kind of family story because my grandfather has been like pretty successful in the stock market, uh, like with investing and just like kind of going long term because he'd been just kind of investing like since he was like younger. And so they, they were like, they wanted to see me. They were like, oh, so you're going to invest this like money that we're giving you because like basically <laughs> my grandparents were like, okay, like we'll help you get set up. Like we'll, we'll give you kind of whatever like you need to get started. And like, I had a job as well. So I was just like putting money into like these OTC stocks. And it was just kind of like that OTC. I was just buying random OTC stocks. Like that's, I mean, that's like pretty much it. So I, I eventually lost all that money. And then I guess like in like, you know, grade 12, I started like kind of short selling because I saw so many, so many people just short selling and that was the only way to make money. So like, um, I basically asked my dad to like create me in a an account like because I was still yeah, like seven you're under 21 yeah and so my dad just created me an account and was like yeah you can just use this just like don't go into debt basically yeah and so you guys are fun you guys are funny because I didn't even tell my parents that I even gave this a shot I was like fuck no my dad is going to slap me across the face and tell me what I'm doing is stupid oh yeah like, I kept the secret for a while man but after a certain point they walk into my room and I got charts moving up or down and they start figuring <laughs> it out yeah the, the first the, I remember the first day I remember the first day I made a thousand dollars I told I was like I told call my dad this is you know two years ago I'm like dad like I just wanted to show you like this is what I'm doing and like this is legit and he's like but how much could you have lost and I'm yeah, like this of motherfucker <laughs> like he doesn't yeah. understand like I don't know. The parents thing was weird. And I think that I remember bro, that like parents, all they care about is like their children's well-being. Like, yeah, exactly. if my kid told me that he wanted to be a fucking professional gambler one day. I'd be like, are you fucking stupid, bro? Go back to school. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? Yeah. But he wants to be a trader. I'm going to kill There's a small percentage of people that actually who work hard and who have the talent for it that find extreme amounts of success. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's true. And so I guess I kind of can like, like put us into our next like conversation, which means this is something Harry and I talk about almost every time we talk, but dating and friends, how, like for you, Alex, at least, yeah. like, how has, how has your life changed since like before, like just like simple dating to now, like, do you, is it tough dating like with this? Like, because trading as people think it's like, yeah, you only trade an hour a day, but like you're here 24 yeah. seven. And you know, then you talk about the whole like, idea of money and everything like that like yeah. how has friendship and that side of your life changed since since trading to now and, and all that so i never told my friends about my trading life for like the longest time i think i told them maybe maybe year three or year four of my wow. journey right and that is because i didn't want them to look at me in a different way or to think differently of me. I just kept my head down and kept grinding away. And I think one day I got drunk and I think I was like up a lot on our trade. And I think I like showed one of my friends and like, yeah, this is what I do. Like this and that I'm up 300 grand this year, X, Y, Z. Like, you know, like <laughs> just kind of explaining that whole process. And they were like just in shock. And now it's like, now everyone knows me as a stock market guy, right? Like anytime anyone has a question about the stock market or when coronavirus happened, I got a hundred phone calls a day. I got girls that I've never, that haven't talked to me in months hitting me up about stock tips. I got people that uh, never traded a day in their life, opening up E-Trade accounts and doubling them because of coronavirus. So yeah. like it's, it's kind of changed a lot and it's been dramatic in terms of friends. But I mean, the way that I like to say it is I like... I surround myself with people that don't really care about money, right? So like my friends are business owners, they're hardworking people, they grind, they understand the hustle. So if anything, if anything, my friends keep me humble, right? My friends keep me humble. 
but there's definitely certain times that I go out with my brother and go partying and do this and that. So I think having a balance of splurging and having a balance yeah. of being humble is the key. But to be honest, when it comes to dating and women, it's a fucking clusterfuck, bro. All someone has to do is <laughs> fucking Google me, right? If someone just fucking Googles yeah. me, they'll find all this information on me, right? So, I mean, it actually happened a while back that I was talking to a girl from Texas and long story short, she Googled me and she saw some shit about trolls and she was like, yo, what's your deal? Like, I'm seeing this shit online. Like, you, you believe like all this shit online? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's kind of what's been happening too. Yeah. But um, what I used to do, which I learned my lesson was anytime I had a date with a girl, I would always pick them up in the nice car. That's definitely the wrong thing to do. I now <laughs> always pick them up in the beater car because I want to see how they react with my Jeep rather than the sports car. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That makes a lot of sense. I mean, no even bling, for, no I, jewelry, first date, no, no ice, yeah. no diamonds, none of that yeah. shit. And I mean, you, you, <laughs> that is lucky. I mean, but even you, like you make a fuck ton more money than, than both of us. And like, even when I go out on a date, like the first thing I think of is like, is this girl just into me? Cause I, she knows I do okay for myself. Like, does that girl actually want to like chill yeah. or is this like, uh, you know? Yeah. And I'm the type of person, right? I'm the type of person that when I go on a date, like I'm fucking doing the whole thing. I'm going to a nice restaurant. I'm doing a yeah. nice, this nice bar, nice that, because I prefer to do the nice things. I work hard. I feel like I should go get a nice thing. I feel like I should go to yeah. a rooftop bar. I feel like I should do that. I should do this they get exposed to that lifestyle and then that kind of fucks up everything as well because I'm not just going to go to Outback Steakhouse just because I'm on a date. I want to go to Peter Luger's because that's what I enjoy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, See, you're yeah. at a weird age because you're younger, right? So, like, you, when you bring people out, is it weird because you're bringing them to places they probably wouldn't go, like, otherwise? Or is it, like, hey, where you're from? Like, are, are girls used to this? Is that, like, kind of the usual? Uh, it depends, man. It depends, like, some people like the bar, some people like the club, some people like this, some people like that. For me, dude, what my, if any girl is watching, what my ideal night is to go out, get some food, get some drinks, get a little bit fucked yeah. up, watch some Netflix, hang out, go outside, you know, just like, I like the more chill environments, whereas Bao is the oops, 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 like <laughs> yeah, party, yeah. girls, drinks, shots, uh, <laughs> champagne showers, like, <laughs> that's how, that's how bow is and that's fun don't get me wrong yeah. but like for me i prefer the more quiet stuff because outside of trading and outside of all these videos i am extremely introverted extreme so yeah that's funny yeah. harry what about you bro you've been i've heard stories about you before but... well yeah i mean i just want to i just want to well first i kind of want to address like i think that you did it right because for me growing up i always had like my friends like super super close to me and like you know like i have like one of my you know i have a good friend who lives across the street and you know he would come over and i'd be like trading and he'd be like holy shit man like you're up like five grand right now and mind you this is in like i'm so young right even to be like when i think about that now i'm like that's mind-boggling how i just like somehow I don't, I don't even, I, I don't even know how, but somehow I'm up five grand. I sell it and everyone, I, because I'm from a small town in Canada, everyone knows. So instantly I go to a party in like grade 12. It's like, Oh, you're this big baller now. And it's like, you know, I only made, you know, like five grand a day and people are like, Oh, only five grand in a day. And I'm like, no, like, you know, that's like, you know, and so basically like, I, I just kind of got labeled as that like kind of reputation and, like I obviously I still trade now so it's not like I just like quit trading but like it has been hard for me with like you know going out with my friends because people are like oh well you know you made so much money like but like and like I've even had to like stop talking to some friends because it's always been about money and whatever and you know just doing stuff like that so it has been kind of hard for me as for girls obviously that's been kind of easier because like you know, when I was in Halifax, I could kind of get away from that a little bit and like kind of talk to people like without like 
people actually kind of knowing who I was because like people couldn't Google me like you know they could Google like Alex you know <laughs> yeah, they're seeing my shit they're seeing videos yeah. they're seeing YouTube they're seeing this yeah that. yeah so people couldn't like find me as as like you know as crazy like that so I wouldn't even bring it up at all I would not talk about like yeah we I go to like a nice restaurant with a girl or you know. Do you tell I, women what you do, Harry or James or what do you, what, let's say, let's say you're out on a date with a girl, right? <laughs> and she says like, she says, what do you do for a living? I'm like, James, that's such a nice watch, right? It's like, yeah. you know, I, I don't know how they would. Dude, have, I, like, what do you say? I, um, the few times I've tried to get into it, it's like, I'm, first of all, I end up just talking way too much and blabbing about how much I love what I do. And you can see the glaze go over their eyes. And I think they're just wondering, like, is this motherfucker going to buy me drinks? Or are we just going to, like, talk about this forever? <laughs> yeah. Because I just blab about it. But no, now, like, I don't even like to tell people that's what I do. Even even my best, like, my best friends are the only people I, that really know. Uh, I started, because, yeah. I started telling girls that I was in dental school because nobody likes <laughs> the dentist. Yeah, I'd be kidding, bro. <laughs> Dude, because that's there's like, a what... big dentistry school. <laughs> Where where I was people. like living, so I was like, yeah, I'm just you know in dentistry, and they're like, oh, that's cool, yeah. No one wants to talk about a root canal or a yeah. filling or some teeth whitening, so it just moves on to them, and that's kind of how it how it just kind of goes. Dude, so my for least me, favorite th- oh, my go, my I was gonna say for me, what happened was when I was first uh, explaining what I was doing to girls. First, I would say I'm a stock trader. Number one thing, oh, you're an asshole. You're a scumbag. Yep. You're a prick. You only care about yourself. Yeah, then I stopped like... telling people that I was a stock trader. I started telling people I was a professional gambler. I explained that. Then they're like, what the fuck are you talking about? So I forgot that. <laughs> now I just tell people that like I work from home. Uh, I'm a teacher part-time. And that's like, I just ended right there, right? It's not a lie. Yeah. I don't want to get into details. I don't want to talk too much because anytime you mention the stock market, or yeah. stock trading, there's a negative image associated with yeah. stock traders. They're all greedy, scumbag, bad, bad mouth talking, yeah. like disrespectful people. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. See, I, I think it goes one or the other way because it has that image. But then like, like I tell my girlfriend when we meet her friends and their boyfriends, I'm like, do not tell them that I trade. Because usually the other way it goes is they start asking me questions about fucking Apple and where I think Amazon's gonna go, and what do you think Hertz is going? Is Hertz gonna go ten? Is Amazon gonna buy Hertz? Yeah, dude, I'll never forget. I met uh, my girlfriend's best friend's uh, boyfriend or whatever, and he's I forget the name of it, what ticker it was, but it was a recent company that just put out the the shittiest news. It was like such a turd. Everything. He's like, dude, they just said that they're gonna cure fucking coronavirus, and I'm like, it was like IBIO, wasn't it, or something? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, something like that. He's like, I'm gonna put 10k into IBIO or whatever it was, and I'm like, yeah, Yeah. man. I mean, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't give investment advice. Yeah, I have no idea. You know, it goes one or the other, but I, dude, I get it, man. Now, dude, it's like, bro, I get people calling me all the time, dude. All the time. I had a friend hit me up today about. Give me a sec. He texted me about SNES stock, which is a 40 cent stock. Yeah. <laughs> my, my reply was this. I said, uh, 99% of penny stocks are scams and will go down long term. It's probably not a good investment. <laughs> which is true. See, that's honest though. That's pretty, that's pretty nice. I mean, like, imagine if someone hits you up about tops and they're like well, thinking about putting their grandmother's IRA in it. I mean, and- dries or some shit. <laughs> I know, but yeah. so before before we get stuck on one topic forever, because I think we can talk about fucking women and, and everything for hours. <laughs> women, alcohol, party. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I speaking of that, actually, this kind of goes into the next big question, but we all know like at MIC how much of an influence Bao had on your life. Sure. Um, but how? Like, what did he do for you? Uh, like positively mentoring, like we all know like he helped you learn how to trade, right? Like he helped you like you know, form your process, I'm guessing, and, and all that. But how did he help you kind of outside of trading, like life mentoring? And like, you know, what did he bring That's a great you? fucking question, man. That's a great question. So Bao is literally like, you can't really make this up. He is the most kind-hearted, yeah. generous, loving, passionate, selfless person ever, right? So Bao whenever there was something like i'll give you a story right so 
we went to the club. Uh, I don't know. We went so, so many times we went to the club together, but there was this one time that we went to the club and we had a great table. The table was maybe like ten thousand dollars. Like it's, it's yep. t- like it's, it's an amazing time. Front row, this that, and we went to the bathroom. And when we're in the bathroom, there's this guy there, you know, like a bathroom attendant. He's like giving, he's like lighting, putting soap on your hands. Like he gives you a cigarette if you want. He gives you gum, whatever this that. Bao took out a hundred dollar bill and tipped the bathroom attendant. And he's like the bottle waitresses and the cocktail girls get all the money and they're always ungrateful and they're spoiled. No one ever looks after the bodyguards and the bathroom attendants. So anytime we go to a club, Bao always tips the bodyguard and Bao always tips the bathroom attendant like a hundred bucks because he knows that those people are underappreciated, yeah. that those people don't get money. The cocktail waitresses get all the money. And Bao is always looking out for the little guy. So ever since that happened, I've kind of seen a side of Bao that has shown me that if you are a good person and you do good things and you try to make the world a better place, the world has a funny way of rewarding you with good karma, right? So yesterday, Bao was at Home Depot maybe, or he was at Costco or some shit, and he took his Ferrari to buy a tape measure. So he took his (laughs) $200,000 Ferrari to buy a $15 tape measure. Goes to the store loses his keys right so he lost his keys and he was like oh my god like uh when the manager asked me what car key it was i was too embarrassed to say the car because they would think i'm some entitled spoiled idiot so instead i said it was a red key so this that turns out that the guy that found bao's keys bao actually bought a computer from him a couple months ago so he did good by buying a computer from him and the world had a funny way of making sure that he was the guy that found Bao's key and yeah. Bao bought him dinner. And that was just really funny. That's, That's awesome. so, Bao, so Bao kind of influenced your life and kind of just your overall Bao thinking. Is, of like, Bao actively teaches me how to become a better person, man. Because yeah. honestly, like, I have bad tendencies. I have temptations. I'm still young. I'm still, I think, based on emotions and not logic. Whereas Bao kind of keeps me more grounded. He reminds me about the little guy. He always, because if you think about it, man, like there was, there was a guy today that uh, wanted to join MIC and he DM'd us and he said, uh, I've been scammed in the past. Uh, can you get on the phone with me to prove that this is real? And anyone else would just be like, fuck that. Like we don't, that doesn't matter for us. One, one new member isn't going to change anything. But you know, Bao just was going to get on the phone with him, right? So Bao, Bao, had these, Bao had the idea that said, you know what, fuck it, I'll just get on the phone with him and I'll try talking to him. I don't think the guy picked up, but he went out of his way. A guy like Bao has no reason to call any of these guys or talk to any of these guys, but Bao has taught me that if you do the right thing and you are good to people, you will yeah. be rewarded. So yeah. we or I or anything, anytime we do anything, we always try to do the right thing so that uh, it makes the world a better place. You pay it forward. And Bao has taught me how to become more caring. He's taught me to become less greedy. He's taught me to become, uh, he's taught me to like seafood a little bit more too. But <laughs> realistically, man, he's just teaching me how to become a better person because he has such a massive heart and he is filled with love. And a lot of people take advantage of him for his kindness. And just seeing how good of a human he is uh, makes me want to be a good human as well, man. And like, yeah. you guys could see it as well, bro. Bao is here yeah. 24-7. He's fucking grinding. He's trying to help. He has, he has all the money in the world. He has all the toys in the world. He has all the women in the world. Yet he chooses to come here and help the little guy every day because he knows that that is going to make an impact on the world. Yeah. That is going to change people's lives. And you know, selfishly, it brings us happiness when we hear that, you know, someone joined and is making money because they put in the work. And to me, MIC is the best system because it rewards the hardworking people. The lazy people that don't put in the work don't make any money. The hardworking people have the potential to make unlimited income. And it's just, it's just a blessing, man. That is awesome. And I just thought yeah, I would ahead. say that they uh, they removed the forty minute time limit. They just sent me a notification. Oh, cool! Oh, nice. Right. nice. They probably heard what we were talking about. They're like these motherfuckers <laughs> got got it going on, man. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> no, but I guess that's cool, right? Because Harry, we always talk about so frequently how, like, the way 
Alex, like the way you are and the way Bao is like yeah. in MIC, it's created this like level of like unlimited loyalty from like, especially the mods, like people who have been a part of MIC either since day one or, or whatever, because you can generally like see in a, if a person is a good person and like, yeah. you know, like both like you and Bao have like put your time and like emotional, like energy into MIC. You can feel like it, man. It's 18 hours a day, man. They don't, they don't yeah. see the behind the scenes, man. They don't see all the stuff that we have to do behind the yeah. scenes. And yeah. the truth of the matter is, man, like, to be realistic and to be honest, Bao could spend his time doing anything else, anything else and make more money. The thing yeah. is that trading is his passion, bro. You guys see, I have to rip this motherfucker away from the screen, bro. <laughs> yeah. the, guy, the guy literally, dude, literally will trade 24 seven if the market is open 24 seven. And that's 359. Exactly. There's days that he closes his orders at 359.59. You know what I'm saying? So like, yeah. Val loves trading, dude, so loves trading. And the fact that we have an ability to do what we love and help the hardworking people achieve their goals brings us a level of fulfillment that we would not be able to find otherwise. Because yeah. having all this money is great, dude. And it's fucking, I'm blessed, I'm thankful, I'm lucky, I'm great, it's good. But it would be boring if there was no purpose behind it, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, is is that what like is that why you started MIC? Like, is that why because? Oh, me and Bao were depressed, bro. Me and Bao had all this money. We were making fucking shitloads, metric fuckloads of money. Yet there was this emptiness. We yeah. felt like we were on an island. We felt like we felt like it, it, it just it, something wasn't there, right? We felt like a void, right? We felt like yeah. a black hole, and you know, we noticed that there was so much scammers out there. We noticed that there was so much misinformation out there. So we said, you know what? Let's just start something and see if helping people and if this is going to work is going to bring us some joy, some happiness. Because again, we had all this money, yet what was the point, right? What was the point? Now, I feel like my life has a purpose. I wake up, I try to help members, I try to educate. I get literally, literally 100 PMs a day, right? From new people every single day, just ask me questions. And what I've learned is that that 10, 15, 20 minutes of answering a question, and then a week later, a member saying that lesson was able to afford me a $1,000 trade, which yeah. allowed me to take my wife on a road trip. That feeling of hearing that brings me more happiness than making six figures in a day. And no yeah. one is going to believe that until you make that money and feel empty inside. Yeah. So that's crazy. How, yeah, Harry, you felt this before, right? Like, cause we've talked about this a lot. Like you, yeah. cause you obviously do well for yourself. And like, we've had this conversation that like, you know, just because you're making money and making good money or more yeah. money than whoever you're around, doesn't mean you're necessarily happy in your life or like feel that, fulfillment yeah that everyone kind of looks for i guess there's like this kind of like promise land that is kind of like oh once you become a consistent trader like you're gonna have no more emotional issues you're never gonna have to worry it's gonna be sunshine beaches you're never gonna have any problems in your life there there's never gonna be issues anywhere there's not you know and it it's just like so untrue how it's kind of I don't even know how it's been shaped like this but I, I talked to so many people and they're like man like the minute I become consistent like all my problems are gonna go away and you know I think yeah money does resolve a hell of a lot of problems and but it's like you know it, it does not bring happiness like you you like you would think it does you know and i guess that was one of the more things that i kind of struggled with when i started making money i'm like oh yeah you know um i don't need to like get up in the morning and and go to a, a real job but it's like you know if you have friends that are trying to like use you for your money or uh you're not in a good state with like your family or you're not in a you know if you're just in an unhealthy state like you know, you're going to uh, not feel like, I don't know, you're not going to feel great, you know, even even with all that money. I mean, you know, so I think there's a huge balance between spending time with your family, uh, spending a lot of time with your friends, uh, working. And I found like kind of like last summer, I said it in one of my old podcasts as well, where I just kind of took some time off for myself and like started like 
reconnecting with like friends I hadn't seen for a while because I was just working for so long. And like, I just feel so much more mentally healthy now than I did, let's say, I don't know, a year ago. What do you guys do for fun outside the market? Like, what is your like turn off switch or your relax switch for both of you guys? <laughs> Drink fireball. Yeah. <laughs> fireball. <laughs> no, I mean, for, you know, for me, man, it's like, I never, like, I was about to say, like, my like most zen, like, the most happy and like comfortable I am is when I'm just with like friends and, and just hanging out, man. Like, yeah, I just I love, I've had, the, yeah, I've had the same group of friends since like we were in like middle school. So it's like when we're together, it's like this like comfort thing and like, we just feel good. Like, I just feel like I can kind of just be myself. Like I can feel like, like, do you know, like when you're friends with your, like when you're in high school and you have your group of friends and it's like, you don't have jobs, nothing fucking matters. You're just like, you're just friends with each other for, for you guys. Yeah. yeah as yeah. weird as that sounds. And that's what this is. It's like, I can just be myself with them. Doesn't matter who makes what, what you do for work. It's just yeah. like fun. We just go out, drink, we play golf. We hang out, smoke cigars. I feel like together, that's how like, after hours is in MIC, bro. You see a bunch of different shit every single day. You see yep. cooking, you see people gardening, some guys making a table. Like, it's yep. Cool, yep. you know, like that's our virtual family right there, too, you know? Yeah, no, I agree. Dude, it's funny. Like, I found myself telling my friends stories from after hours. Like, when after <laughs> hours gets fucking going, it's hilarious. Like, I'm dying yeah. laughing and I'm like telling people, people are looking at me like I'm crazy. Cause I'm like, dude, this guy, we're just, sit, we're just sitting there just fucking scrolling. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Uh, the amount of fights I've gotten into with like my girlfriend because I'm just on after hours dying laughing. And she's like, who is on the phone with you right now? I'm like, Oh, it's, <laughs> It's five nine fish, dude. He's fucking yeah. Killing. Like, it's, yeah. It's so Made another like, meme of Joe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> dude, more of us. Joe, kill me. Yeah. I know, dude. Oh my god, and that's that's why I love having MIC. Like, honest to god, like you, you ask like what we do for fun, but like, dude, I feel like half of my life is this. It's like this is what I love to do. So it's like that also brings me that level of like happiness. Is just yeah. like being with people that are like minded. That if understand. You're not with, they get it. Yeah. They yeah. Get it. Yeah, being surrounded by people who don't understand your goals is like draining. I think that's the draining thing of like the life outside of trading. And, you know, when we have, I don't know, how many members are there now? 1,500 or something. When you have 1,500 people that are kind of on the same page as you, it's yeah, like there's, there's no better There's somewhere along that journey, you know, wherever yeah. they are, they're somewhere along that journey and they understand, you know? Yeah. So. And, and how, how cool is it that we have someone from like day one, we have someone who joins today who knows nothing about trading and then we have Bao. And we have everything yeah. in between, right? I mean, that's that's insane. And that's what makes yep. this family, I think, so so fucking cool. It's true, yeah. man. It's true. We're and also the thing is, man, it's hard to find ambitious people. It's hard to find people that want to shoot for the fucking stars. You know, you might have some friends that just want a nine to five, they want an easy life, no problem. Good for you. I got nothing wrong yeah, with exactly. it. But for me, man, for me, I want more. I want the Peter Lugers. I want the nice car. I want the nice vacation. I want all that stuff. Yeah. And having people that don't want that bringing you down ends up making you kind of forget your goals or forget your dreams because you get lazy. But if you have people in MIC, like if I see someone like James that is in here at 5 a.m. and says he starts his morning off with two videos, well, I'm going to say, fuck you, bro. I'm going to start my morning with three videos now, <laughs> motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? And just seeing that, having that friendly competition to push each other further is what is going to take us to that next level of the promised land that we want. Yeah. And like you said, we have 1,500 people that want those same goals, 1,500 ambitious people, people that love or business owners, or James is a barbershop owner. He owns yeah. a bunch of high-end barbershops. He trades because he fucking loves it. And now I have a friend that is also a business owner that understands what it's like to be a business owner and to trade and do this and do that. And yeah. now maybe in the future, James and I could work on a business together. We could do this. And you know, it's like, it's, it's the potential is unlimited when you are surrounded by smart, hardworking people. And yeah. the best thing that I've learned is always surround yourself with people smarter than you. And most of the time, if you're joining MIC, people are going to be on different levels. So you're going to be surrounded by the very best. Yeah. Yeah. I, no, I love that. Yeah, I love that. that. And like, does that, does that now make you like in your like most like recent, like, if you think about your emotional level now, like in and outside of the market, like being surrounded by these people, do you feel now like the strongest you ever have? Like, is this like the best you've ever felt in your life because of how much good you're doing and how well you can trade? 
Like, is there, sure. what is this like? Where, where are you at so, kind of right now? This has been honestly like knock on wood. This has been like the happiest I've ever been like in my entire life. 2020 has been my best year ever in terms of happiness. Mm-hmm. It's not correlated to the money. It's correlated to the fact that I am hanging out with my friends more. I'm hanging out with my family more. Yeah. Uh, members are improving faster. We have a member like Faye that joins and is kicking ass in a couple months. My trading is doing really good. We're six months into the year. I'm up 600 grand. Again, yeah. working one hour a day. Uh, I'm going to buy Crazy. some property soon when the whole world collapses. I want to <laughs> reward myself with a new car. Like, so there's a lot of things that I'm doing in the pipeline this year yeah. that is bringing me happiness. And this is, again, knock on wood, the first year that I've actually felt genuinely happy in a long time because the foundation that I've built for myself is kind of finally coming into pieces. I have something that brings me joy, which is helping people. I have something that brings me adrenaline and fun, which is trading. I have something that brings me a life outside of trading, which is my friends. I have my family that keeps me grounded. I got my best buds, Bao and Tosh that I want to hang out with. Like, I, I'm, I feel very lucky and I feel really grateful and I hope that I'm not top ticking my life right now, bro. I hope that this yeah. is just a fucking dip. <laughs> so do, do you, do you find that like the money you make is directly correlated with your emotions? Like by 100%. making like, yeah, like, cause you seem happier. Like even talking 100%. to you, you seem less stressed. 100%. And, and it's, it's just a matter of not even the money, dude. It's a matter of like, I don't care if I lose a hundred bucks or a thousand bucks, the pain feels the same. It's just the pain of being a loser, which I never want to be, right? Yeah. And in trading, you have to be used to getting shit on. You have to be used to losing. You have to be used to not being right all the time. So I'm Middle Eastern. I'm stubborn. My fucking family is stubborn. Like they're all like uh, headstrong. So I grew up with that mentality. So being able now to be a trader and being seeing both sides of the equation I never take anyone's side. I rather always like to hear both sides of the story first or uh, a problem that I've been having is I'm too emotionless these days. So I was talking to a girl a while back and she said, you're completely detached from everything. All you care about is this fucking stupid stock market thing. And the truth of the matter is you have to be emotionless to be able to become a good trader. So I've personally been struggling with finding a balance between being passionate about something that's outside of trading, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. I, yeah, I, I agree. Harry, you've had this issue too, right? Yeah, big time. Where I'm just like, you know, I, you know, like, you know, like that you need, like for me anyway, like I know that I need a balance. I know it's always in the back of my mind. Everyone's telling me you need a, some type of balance. You need to find something else. You know, I bought a $1,500 pair of golf clubs. <laughs> And I went out with my friends and I was like, you know what? Going to do golf now. But I never have any time to golf because like (laughs) at the end of the day, I didn't want to golf, you know? And you just tried to find like an outlet. Yeah. Yeah. So like, you know, I bought a nice pair of clubs. I'm like, yeah, my reward, I'm going to go golfing. You know, my little brother came, some of my friends came, like, you know, we all had a good time golfing, but you know, I'm not really there when i'm golfing i'm thinking yeah. about oh what did uh this do today or how could i have traded this better or how i'm always checking today? quotes bro even yeah, fucking when terrible. i shouldn't be i'm always checking quotes yeah even on the weekend like i'm just like oh like <laughs> yeah I'm, weekend like, comes i'm looking at futures bro i'm throwing up the yeah. bitcoin chart i'm yeah. doing anything bro i'm, yeah. I'm, I'm bitcoin. all of a sudden a commodities <laughs> trader you know <laughs> yeah. dude that's see that for me, that's always been like my biggest struggle and like, especially with relationships and like friendships, everything, families that my mental state is always focused on like the future and like how yeah. I'm going to make more. It's not even just about the money. Like to me, the more money you make is like keeping score. It's like, it's, sure. that might even be the wrong way to say it, but say it, but it's like, it's the it's high just, score of a video game. It yeah, is I like agree. the success you get, you know, financial freedom and money comes from it. So detaching that like need from like, like just trying once to go to a dinner and not be on your phone thinking about trading or thinking about your business or whatever you're doing. And you know, it's hard, man. I think that's hard. And I think it's like every time we talk about trading, our eyes twinkle, bro. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Oh, like, there's dude. a fucking star in our eyes. So like being able to be emotionless in the market, but be emotional with a partner is two conflicting ideas. The more yeah. emotional you become, the fucking more you suck in the market. The less, the more 
emotionally you become in the market, the more money you make, but your relationships suffer. So it's, it's very true. hard to find the balance between these things, you know? And, and like, how, how, yeah, go ahead. My bad, Harry. Oh, no, it's okay. But I was just going to say, like, you know, there's two people that kind of, like, live around me that, like, live, like, you know, um, you know, kind of near me. So sometimes they'll be like, oh, Harry, they actually joined MIC uh, for a couple months, and then they, they just didn't have enough money to just keep going. So they're like, yeah, well, you know, we'll rejoin later. Like, and they, they just, like, you know, came in and, I'm sure they've like DM'd uh, Alex or Bao or, you know, whatever. But, um, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll meet up with them and I have a one friend named Justin who will record the tape. And so he has a separate laptop that records the tape and then he like kind of uploads it to like a, a YouTube, whatever. And mm -hmm. in, su in my Sunday mornings, I always watch it. And my Saturday mornings as well, like with a coffee, you know, it's like a ritual. And he'll see the views and he'll be like, man, there's a hundred views on this one recording. Like, how have you watched this so much? And because he's like, you know, <laughs> I've only, I've only watched it. Uh, he's like, I've only watched it like three or four times. And he's like, this is at like a hundred. But it's like, I mean, you know, what else am I going to do on a Saturday morning? Like, you know, because you know that the time that you put in is directly correlated with your success. Exactly. So in that extra time and extra work, go figure you're gonna probably make some more money so we feel because we are overachievers we are hustlers we are hard-working people so we feel like any moment that we're away from the market yeah. or any moment that we're not thinking about it someone else is thinking about it and someone else is going to get an edge on us yeah it's true but it, it's crazy like how do you think you can like actually have like a successful like marriage relationship anything like when you know the work you put in like the, the truth of the matter is i would much rather watch mic videos than like hang with my friends sometimes because i know the more i watch of that the better off my life can be in the long run so it's finding that balance is i haven't had hard. a successful relationship in years bro so i'll let you know bro, when it happens you're preaching <laughs> the damn choir bro harry i know I, harry, i've seen your relationships man <laughs> that, that is i don't know it's a struggle. It's not easy. So. <laughs> Harry's just smiling. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't want to say a word. Doesn't want to incriminate himself. I know. Well, I know no girl I ever date will watch this entire thing. Some psycho might, so I guess I should watch You got to watch but, out, bro. You got to watch but, out. My ex yeah. that got me into trading is now TikTok famous. She has 80 of course. followers on TikTok. <laughs> Yeah. She's probably gonna make more money than you too. Watch. What is that, bro? Make more money, shake your ass. <laughs> I wish I could shake my ass and make money, bro. I shake my ass, I'm gonna go to fucking jail. Dude, we gotta get Tosh. Tosh shakes his ass. We'll probably have oh five thousand members God, tomorrow. Bro. Just Tosh, we'll be a female oh only club. <laughs> we were at a club one time in San Jose. It was me, Bao, uh, and Tosh. And Tosh, I don't know. Tosh doesn't really drink. Right? He doesn't really drink that much. So yeah. we went to the club. We're drunk. We're hanging out. Me and Bauer are dancing. We're having a good time. Tosh is sitting down at the table with a water. This cute blonde girl walks to him at the club and is starting to talk to Tosh. Meanwhile, no girls for me and Bao. So Tosh <laughs> is sitting there sober, sitting there like a statue, right? Sitting there like a statue and the girls come to him, dude. So I have no clue what that feels like, but it must be fucking nice. <laughs> bro, bro, I could go, I could spend however much money I want. It doesn't matter. Girls will walk right by me and then they'll just go to the next guy and the next guy. And if I have Tosh next to me, it's, it's not going to fuck It's game happen. over, bro. If you have Tosh next to you, bro, you might as well. You're, Tosh is the hot chick and you're the side chick, bro. Dude, yeah, that's, Tosh. The pro <laughs> that's the problem. Dude, you got Bao and Tosh to fight with. I'm done. I'm toast. It's not going to work. <laughs> No, that's funny. But yeah, that funny. I guess that could that can bring us to our last. We had one more question for you. And sure. that was that was what are your future goals kind of now? Like twenty twenty forward, where are you looking to go and what is it you want to achieve in the next, I don't know, ten, fifteen, twenty years? Sure. So number one is I want to be able to spend more time with my brother. So as my brother gets older, he's getting smarter. He's wiser. He's incredible. How old is he? Alan, he just turned 24. So I'm, okay, I think yep. I'm turning 26 in a couple months yep. and yep. he's 24. All you people are so old. <laughs> yeah, how old are you, okay. Harry? I literally 22. turned 21 in June. Oh my God. Damn. That is first it's sip of alcohol, bro. Yeah. Disgusting. Well, it's 19 in Canada. So. Oh my uh, God. It's even better. But, Dude, I'm four uh, years from 30. Fuck. 
Four years, dude, we're fucking, we're almost the same age, bro. <laughs> I know, <laughs> Jesus, but sorry, go ahead. Just bro, if Bao is 45 and he could party the way that he does, bro, I think we're going to be just fine. Dude, I don't think Bao's 45. I think Bao's like 150. He just never ages. He just is bro, the, oh, a unicorn. Crazy, man. This guy will out drink a 21 year old, bro. And, and he'll fucking black out. He'll give, like, it's, bro, it's. Dude, who has a shot drawer? Who has a shot drawer? Who really has a house? shot drawer, bro? The guy opens the drawer and whips out shots. <laughs> <laughs> but, anyways, go ahead. Um, Sorry, yeah, so I'm spending more time with my brother. I want to get close to my brother. Um, in terms of trading, man. Uh, I like what I'm doing. Uh, if anything, I just want to trade even fucking less, bro. I want to trade even yep. less. I want to yep. trade even less because I've realized that the less that I trade, the more money I make because I don't get stupid, right? I don't gamble it away. I don't be stupid with it. No. Um, what else is there? I want to be able to take advantage of this coronavirus opportunity and buy a bunch of properties for cheap and start to build a real estate portfolio while I'm young. Um, what else? Cool. I want to start to be able to use all this money that I have in the bank that I've been growing for six years to kind of get me to the next level, right? Because I've just been saving and saving and saving and saving. And yeah, now me that too. We have, yeah, now that we have this opportunity where there's 40 million people out of work, people can't afford their mortgages, I want to be able to start to diversify my income outside of trading. That's cool. Yeah. I and mean, so do you, are you, you think you're going to be trading your whole life? Like, is that positive for you? I you think know? I'm going to be trading until my hands stop working. <laughs> and then you'll learn to trade with your feet. And then like I'll learn to trade with my feet. And then when that doesn't work, I will hire a kid to trade for me. <laughs> oh, I have one last <laughs> oh, question. So, oh, go ahead. Oh, have, have, you, have you ever thought about like trading like the spy or like stuff like that? Um, honestly, I've messed around here and there, but what I've learned is all of these large cap, big cap stocks are algorithmic hells. There are algos everywhere. They're designed to fuck you over. Whereas yeah. these small caps are all scams. So I know that I have an edge with scams. So if I find some sort of edge in large caps, uh, then I will take it. But you know, we got people like Joe making money. You got people like Brian, you got even yeah. Faye making money on large caps. For me, it's not worth my time to invest and learn large caps when small caps are working so well <laughs> rather than being the jack of all trades i'd rather be the fucking expert of one yeah oh, i love it yeah. oh yeah you know, what's, you know what's funny too is alex is like i've noticed in like your trading and like i've just noticed even in mine the best trades literally come like almost a half hour before zombie hour starts like by 10 a.m we're pretty much done and wrapped up for the day and that is good. Like, I like seeing that. Like, I always feel like I always look and like, I know, you know, you have your tabs and like, we all have our tabs and like, but I feel like if we're still around even close to zombie hours, there's a problem. If we're not, if we're still trading and doing yeah. something, it's like, uh, so I like that trade less idea. I really like that going yeah, forward. Man, because again, it's like, it's, it's very simple, bro. To me, it's like, I've realized that usually I make most of my money uh, by 9.50 a.m. or 10 a.m. If I'm staying past 10 a.m., that means I'm still wiggling around the position. And if I'm past 1030, it means that I'm just fighting, right? Yeah. So yeah. recognizing that and taking the steps to improve that, it's funny, bro. Whenever I finish my trading early, I am in a good mood for the entire day. Anytime I am at the desk all fucking day, bro, I feel drained. I feel shot. I'm tired. I'm complaining. Like I'm, I'm just not myself, right? So I've learned that trading less not only makes me more money, it also brings me more happiness, which is the end goal of everything, every time. Yeah, I love that. Dude, I've, I've loved this conversation. I actually, I, I love this podcast, bro. I think you guys are a lot of fun. Um, yeah. For those that don't know, Harry and James are taking over the podcast. I'm going to be their first guest. Um, if you guys liked it or if you guys have any feedback or you want to see someone on or anything like that, yeah. Let us know. Let Harry and James know. Um, yeah. And this is going to be their show from now on. And I'm excited to see what you guys do with it. Yeah, perfect. All right. Yeah. Well, Harry. thank you. Yeah. Glad to no, have thank you. you guys.